Our opening song is number 613, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, number 613. whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Paul, whom you have called to journey to you, and since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please now be seated as we open our hearts and listen to the word of God. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold, our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that he who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again 
and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I've been here now about 10 years almost, and part of my regular schedule was to stop by and see Paul at least twice a year for confession, anointing, and communion, and more often when his health struggles brought him to the hospital. And every visit, uh, I, I just so loved this dear man and enjoyed my visits with him, and I was always deeply moved and edified by his faith, his very deep, strong faith. And anyone who knew Paul knew that faith was at the very center of this man. You could not understand Paul unless you understood how faith was absolutely the foundation of everything about him and his life. I always enjoy what happens before the funeral mass. And even though we're a rather small group this morning, uh, Paul chose a terrible day for his funeral, just a terrible day. But uh, thank God there's the live stream, and we also want to welcome them, all those who are joining us via live stream. But just to watch you all visiting in the gathering space. We all know, especially in moments of hardship, when we lose someone who is very dear to us, what a gift our family and our friends are to us. We rediscover this every time we lose someone that we love. And just to know that your presence here today, and again those joining us via live stream, how each of you are such a gift and a blessing to each other. All the ways that we love each other, support and encourage one another, especially during these times that are hard. While each of us can be a consolation for one another, the gift of the funeral mass especially when the, the readings are read, it gives God a chance to speak into those places of our heart that only God can reach. It's beautiful to realize there's a place in your heart and mine that only God can reach. And there's a comfort and a consolation that only God can offer us. This is why I love this gospel reading that was chosen for Paul's funeral day. Let's hear this reading in the way that God wants us to hear it, so that we might be truly comforted by God himself. Jesus begins by saying to his disciples, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. He said this at a time when he announced that he was going to be leaving them. And they had followed him for three years. Jesus was everything to these 12 disciples. And now he's leaving. And so they are troubled and deeply distressed and sad. And so then Jesus says, you have faith in God, have faith also in me. This is how Jesus comforts them. He reminds them that they have a very beautiful gift that binds them to him. And this is a reminder to us this morning, the greatest gift that you and I brought here this morning is the gift of our faith. And Jesus is inviting us to see Paul's life and even to see his death through the lens of faith, through our relationship with him. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I go to prepare a place for you. This is a reminder to the disciples and to each one of us, and Paul knew this very well. Our life here on earth is not our home. This is not our permanent dwelling. In fact, we are only pilgrims passing through. There is another life, a permanent life, a much more beautiful, better life that awaits us. And once we taste that and experience it, our life here on earth will seem like no life at all. And scripture tells us, as in the first reading, that eternal life, that heavenly life, where the victory over sin, Satan, and death will be complete, there will be no more pain or suffering. There will be no more sorrow or tears. In fact, there will be no more death. Everything of this life will pass away. And Jesus said, I make all things new. That is the life that Paul's death has opened him up to experience. I go to prepare a place for you. And I love the question of Thomas because it's all of our question. Lord, what is the way to this place that you are preparing? I want to go there and be with you and to be with all my deceased loved ones. Lord, how do I get there? How do I know the way? And don't you love the answer? <laughs> and we all need to hear this again this morning. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You and I needed to hear that this morning because sometimes we forget not only that we are pilgrims, that this is not our permanent home, but sometimes we forget that Jesus is the way. Sometimes we try to go about our life here on our own, without God, and we don't lean on the Lord as much as we ought. And so Jesus reminds us in his mercy, in his love, stay close to me. Keep your faith in me. Take my hand and I will lead you all the way. 
I am the way to the Father, and no one can get there except through me. And this is what I loved about Paul. He lived this with great conviction, and it expressed itself in three ways, by the way he worshiped, by the way he loved, and by the way he suffered. By the way he worshiped, every time I stopped in to see Paul, guess what he was watching? He was watching the Mass on TV. The Mass was the absolute center of Paul's life. Do this in memory of me, said our Lord. And Paul was a faithful mass goer and even daily mass when he could. He would go to adoration frequently, and when he could no longer go to mass or adoration, he spent almost the whole day watching it on TV. Every time I stopped in, there on his TV screen was the mass. <laughs> Why? Because he knew that his union with Christ was the only way he could live his life fully and prepare for the life that was to come. Whoever eats my body, drinks my blood, remains in me and I in him. And I love the promise that Jesus makes to those who receive his body and blood. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. For Paul, the Eucharist communion was the food of immortality. And every time he received communion, Jesus renewed the promise Whoever eats my body has eternal life. And this is how he stayed in close union with Jesus. And this is what impacted the other two parts of his faith, how he loved, how he suffered. It was beautiful to hear the notes from the meeting with uh, Paul's children and how his faith impacted how Paul loved, how he loved his dear wife, Diane, for almost 55 years. I think in June was gonna be the 55th anniversary. 55 years of persevering, faithful love. And many times through the ups and downs, the trials and the hardships, after 50 years, you can start raising the victory flag, right? After that, boy, I'll tell you, it just gets better. All his faithful love to you, Diane, and then to his dear children, Stacy and Greg, and then his grandchildren, and then the people that he touched in his uh, sales uh, ministry, you could call it. For him, it was a ministry. He loved people. And when he met someone, they realized that there was something special about this man. I heard that even after uh, that he retired from the various places where he delivered products, that they would uh, celebrate his retirement with a party because they loved him so much but they loved him because he loved them. He loved them in a way that showed that Jesus made the difference for this man, that he loved people. He made people feel special just the way he treated them and went about his ministry. It also impacted the way he suffered. This is what struck me about Paul every time I visited him. He would talk about his struggles, especially with his Parkinson's disease, 
and how that made his life so challenging and it limited him so much physically. But it never made him hopeless or despairing. Why? Because he would often tell me how he was offering his suffering and uniting it to the suffering of Jesus for his family, for his friends, for his church, and for the salvation of the world. He was not wasting his suffering. He knew that if he took it and gave it to Jesus, that Jesus would make it redemptive and salvific, a means of grace that would benefit others. And when I heard him talk about how he would live his suffering with Jesus, it made me realize that I complain a lot. When I'm suffering, when life is hard for me, I don't always quickly bring it to Jesus. Sometimes I forget. And boy, I'll tell you, Paul kept me on the straight and narrow. And I left his presence edified like, boy, I got to carry my crosses better. I got to carry my crosses with greater love and greater faith. So we thank God today for the difference that Jesus made for this dear man. And in many ways, how he worshiped, how he loved, how he suffered. And now that suffering is at an end. Praise God. The battle is over, Paul. And now we commend him to the Lord's mercy. This is our prayer today. This great prayer of the Mass. Jesus died for our brother so that all of his sins could be forgiven and that the way to heaven would be wide open to welcome this dear servant who followed Jesus so faithfully and served God so well. Let us honor this man by living our faith deeply and with great love. Let us love each other. Let us make sure God is at the center, that we're worshiping the Lord on a regular basis. And let us take this brother's example in our suffering. <laughs> let us bring our suffering to Jesus, knowing that that suffering bears a crown of glory for us when God takes us into his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Please rise. Dear sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for us in his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord. We now join our prayers to his. In baptism, Paul received the light of Christ. May God now scatter the darkness and lead him over the waters of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord might welcome Paul to happiness, peace, and eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they might have the reward of their goodness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our servicemen and women in the military, in gratitude for service and for their safety at home and abroad, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who grieve today at the loss of Paul, may we be heartened by God's word to us and consoled by the continuing, continuing presence of Jesus among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Paul. 
May God strengthen our hope so that we might live in the expectation of his son's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, give her a peace and healer of all hearts. Hear the prayers of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people gathered here today whose lives were purchased by the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Forgive the sins of all who now sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. Please now be seated as we prepare the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Our preparation of the gift song is number 614. What wondrous love is this, number 614. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Paul, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may also find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Jesus the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Paul, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please rise. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called 
to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just a little announcement for this time of Holy Communion. Our God is a, a loving Father who loves to bless His children. If there are any little children here today or anyone who does not share our Catholic faith or doesn't feel prepared for Holy Communion, we still would welcome you forward during this time for a blessing if you wish. If you would like a blessing today, just indicate that by putting your hand over your heart in this way, please. Our communion processional is number 816. You satisfy the hungry heart, number 816.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our dear brother Paul may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And speaking of tables, uh, Paul's family uh, wants you all to know that you are invited to join them for the luncheon immediately following uh, the Mass here today. Uh, they, they hope you can stay and share this meal uh, with them. And what else are you going to do? Go out and battle the snow? <laughs> it's a good day to just stay inside and enjoy each other's company. So hopefully you can stay for the luncheon. We'll go right through these doors into the next room uh, and we'll have our luncheon there. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for our brother Paul. And now we come to this last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take great comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Paul again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ. We come now to another beautiful moment in the funeral liturgy. We call it the prayer of commendation. We are here today because of our love for Paul and for his family. And we can express this love now in commending together our brother to the Lord. And we can express that beautifully also with our bodies in this gesture of extending our hands out. So please feel free to join me. Let's extend our hands out together in this gesture of commending Paul to the Lord. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Paul in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, Paul will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon Paul in this life. They are all signs to us of your love and goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. 
Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us now go forth in peace as we anticipate taking our brother to his place of rest. Our closing song is number 519. Holy God, we praise thy name, number 519.